the witchcraft. Yes. Attitude, face get frowned up. The Bible says these are the works of the flesh. Emulation, variance, heresies, witchcraft. <laughs> it's a work of the flesh. Ain't no moo moo juju -ju juice. <laughs> the craft, you, your, you little witch, your craft is in you. Men get witchcraft, little warlocks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to intimidate you. Look, look at this little witch. Little warlock spirit. You ever see boxing? What are they doing? They threaten each other. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and if you back up, they deck you. <laughs> witches. Oh, witches. <laughs> Talking about witches. <laughs> Come on. This ain't for the glory of God. That's for the glory of the devil. You start smiling, guess what? It's it's not, you're not trying to hide. <laughs> Grumbling, murmuring and complaining. You know you're full of the devil. <laughs> and if you're not, you will be any minute now. Because murmuring is tongues of the devil. You ever murmur? That's demonic tongues. <laughs> Nobody can understand what you said, but Satan did, and God also, and that's why he chastised you. Say, ain't no devil gonna speak around me, pow! <laughs> Book of Romans, they murmured and complained and was destroyed of the destroyer. You better watch your murmuring, because you're talking from the devil. Anybody here have children? Let your child murmur after you told him to do the dishes. You walk up right, what you said? What you said? <laughs> you know they wasn't blessing you. You just, your hand just got real stiff. <laughs> you back talking? No, I was just murmuring. What? Because <laughs> they wanted Satan to be glorified. They wanted their flesh to rule. You ask somebody for something, they push it to you, they go, Ted, take it. Oh, you want to fight? <laughs> <laughs> All these gestures give glory to somebody. Sorry for this long message. Because we want to we want to get to a place where God gets the glory in whatever we do. Why did you scream? For the glory of God? No, it wasn't. So here's what happened: Children of Israel, they get afraid. God, then they start to get ready to stone Moses. That's why you don't take a lot of building fund offerings here. Because <laughs> sometimes you get tired of taking offerings. You want to just come to church after the offering. <laughs> when people milk you too much, you'd be like, I ain't got no more milk. <laughs> come on, help me. So here they are. You brought us to a land that flowed with milk and honey. You told us it's ours, but we say we can't take it, so what do we do? We're going to kill you. You don't, get your you don't get your blessing. You don't get your miracle. You don't get your way. You blame the pastor. You blame the church, and you go. Prophet, do something. You, you don't get your way. You don't get your miracle. You blame the church. You blame the pastor. You go when you don't get your way. You want to stone them. So they want to kill Momo. <laughs> and the Bible said, and the glory of God came. And God said, I'm going to kill them all. And Moses said, don't do it. He said, but surely as I live, the whole earth shall be filled with my glory. Amen. And what was God saying? The whole earth is going to be filled with people that get what I say they, they have. When I promise them something, they're going to get it. You got a choice. Have God bless you or have God get, push you aside. They chose to have him push them aside. 
40 years it took for him to kill them. But he did it in a nice way. He let them just die. He would have killed them in a moment. He said, Moses, back up. It won't take me long to kill all of them. But Moses said, no. He said, all right, it's going to take 40 years then. And they all die. You got to get, get to a place where you say, listen, I'm living for the glory of God. I am not going to complain anymore. If I can't pay a bill, I ain't coming out of my mouth. I'm going to try and find money. I'm going to try and find money. I'm going to try and find a way that I can pay this bill, but it is not coming out of my mouth. I am not going to complain. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will make my boast in the Lord. The humble will hear thereof and be glad. People that don't have any hope, they hear you complaining. You're the hope of glory. You're the one that, that, that lives with the fact that at any minute God's going to show up. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And any minute now, I'm about to blow up. I'm about to give God more, more, more reputation. Any husbands and pre-husbands, get married, but have money. Make sure she can look gooder and gooder. And then gooder. Until her goodest is her bestest. Because all she's trying to show you is this is yours. But if she all ugly and stank, you're going to be looking for an unstank wife. You're a man. Yeah, it's all right, honey. You don't have to look like that. But I'm going to look at it. <laughs> Women were created for men. That's why they could pay it to, that's why they can pay attention to how they look. Yeah, man. <laughs> but that's why you men that want to get married, give them get enough money to have a wife. It's more than just sex. That's true. Amen. Put the magazine, put the magazine down, because that ain't costing you nothing. <laughs> how did I leave my message? Oh, <laughs> so when God decides to get glory. He'll put you through a story. But let the story take its place. Amen. I got one more. I'm going to try and close. Man, I can't close. But I'm, we don't have to close. Jeremiah 27, 6. Don't go there because we're going to close in Romans 9, 17. Jeremiah. God raised up. Now watch this. Anybody here? I want you to give me full attention because I'm going to close here. Prophet, you do anything with you. Anything you want to do, you can do. <laughs> Just do something. <laughs> now, now watch this. Anybody ever heard of the children of Israel? It's Solomon. God told Solomon, he said, if you disobey me, I'm going to use the rod of men to chastise you. Now you're all here now, right? That means when you're out of line, somebody, human, human, is going to chastise you for God. We want to blame the devil. Get off me. If the, the devil doesn't get permission to chastise you, if the devil is going to be used, he might be used to hurt you. Yes. Yes. I don't want time. Satan is the thief, a murderer. He's not used to chastise. He used to kill, steal, and destroy. But God said, when you sin, I'm going to use the rod of men to chastise you. So this is what happened. So Solomon, you know, God told him that. So the children of Israel, they sinned, right? So God raises up his servant called Nebi. Nebuchadnezzar. God called him his servant. He said, my servant, Nebuchadnezzar, I have given all the nations to worship him. Nobody hear me because I know the message is long. The message is long, but listen, listen. Stay two more minutes with me. I should do it, Jesus, and say, Could you not watch one hour? Look, Nebuchadnezzar, his people are not the children of Israel. But God said, I'm giving everything to him. And he uses that to chastise God's people. 
But he tells God's people this. Those, anybody have a job? That's why you need to work. He said to the people of Israel, he said this, serve him for 70 years, then I'll get you out. A false prophet comes. Now watch this, right? Because you got so many false prophets in the church. The Lord's going to bless you. I see the Lord lifting you up. I see seven days. Seven days you're coming out. Seven days. It'd be the 70th day. You'd be like, why well, didn't come out? You in sin. But he wanted your seed. That lying prophet wanted goods. So the prophets in the land, Jeremiah said, no. God is bringing Nebi here. And we need to submit to Nebuchadnezzar. But the false prophet says, no. God's going to crush Nebuchadnezzar. And Jeremiah said, you listen to him if you want to. God said Nebuchadnezzar is his servant. So you need to understand where you are in God's dealings. If you're wrong, repent. We all want to believe God's going to bless us. He is going to bless us, but he's going to bless the upright. Because the upright gives him glory. So, he raises up Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar comes, takes over the children of Israel, takes some of them to Babylon. Now, this is where the story gets good. You ready for this? Where do you think Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel got snipped at? They got snipped in Babylon. Had they not been made eunuchs, they might have never had that anointing revealed through them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not normal men lusting after women. Their manhood was taken, so all they did was serve God. I'm helping through, y'all. Shadrach didn't say, y'all can't wait to get home and get me a girl. They were young boys that were snipped. And so they were able to focus on God. Because when they were writing, God needed the, the world, the history of the world to be recorded purely. And that's why Daniel was able to hear from God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, listen, we're not going to bow down to your statue. You want to throw us in the fire? Throw us in the fire. Why? Because they had no other desire but God. You got a wife and kid, and they're talking about throwing you in the fire. Nah, it's all right. What? What? Where's the statue? Hey, hey. Got another one? Hey, hey. My wife going to get me if I don't come home. <laughs> so he took the strength from them. Y'all heard me, right? So, after God made Nebuchadnezzar act like an animal, the Nebuchadnezzar, now watch this. David, none of them ever said what Nebuchadnezzar did. Nebuchadnezzar commanded everybody to worship God. He was a heathen king, but he said, if anybody say anything bad about God, I'm going to kill you. people that are about to flip the switch in your favor. They were your enemies. They're going to be your best producer. If you stay right under them. The prophecy that Jeremiah had was submit to Nebi. All this pride and arrogance that the church is, is what do they call it? Propagating is hurting us. Because we're not to be a proud people. We're to be a humble, submitted people. It's messing us up. Right. To the point God can't move in our nation. So after God gets the glory out of Nebuchadnezzar, he raises up Cyrus. And God calls Cyrus, he said, my anointed servant. He calls Cyrus my shepherd. Now this guy, Cyrus, anybody here saw the movie 300? Cyrus was their grandfather. The Medes and the Persians. But God said, that's my servant, my shepherd. 
Mm. This is where I like to smack the devil in the mouth. You remember when seven, what's the, what's the devil's name? I can't even say his name right. Devil. Remember he lied to Jesus? He told Jesus, all these kingdoms in the earth are mine. Just bow down. See, he's a devil. He's a liar. God said Cyrus was my servant. <laughs> Come on, help me, people. Satan didn't say that. This world doesn't belong to the devil. He's the prince and the power of the air. Sinners. He runs sinners' lives and he runs demons' lives. But the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. I'm getting excited here. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. So now, Nebi's job is done. Guess what he does? Raises up Cyrus. Kill Nebi. Get rid of Nebi. And guess what happened with Cyrus? He, says, he tells Cyrus, bless my people with enough money to go back to Jerusalem. Here is the guy that now takes out Nebuchadnezzar. And now Cyrus says, I command you all that can build, you go build. Those of you that have money, you give your money. Make sure that the house of God is built. I know it's a long message, but y'all gonna get it. So when God is gonna do something for his glory, everybody's in the story. Amen. <laughs> the wealth of the sinner is what? Laid up for the righteous. They'll all be in the story. You got to stop hating them. You got to make sure you love them so when God turns them, they can remember you for good. No sinner going to bless you. If you hate them, they're going to be like, I'll give it to somebody else. I'll look for Niger. I'm almost done. So he raises them all up. And in Romans 9, y'all there? Romans 9, 17? What does it say? For this cause have I raised up Pharaoh that I might show my power. Hallelujah. I'm taking my time. I don't, I'm not afraid of y'all. I'm afraid of those in the empty seats though. He said, for this cause I raised up Pharaoh that I might show my power. Pharaoh was the most powerful person in the earth. And God used him like a toy. Now watch this. This is going to be scary. Anybody want to be afraid of God for a little bit? It'll be healthy for you. Pharaoh wanted to quit. Pharaoh said, let him go. And God backed up off of him. Pharaoh said, go get them. Now, can I give you an example about God? Now, Mike, come on. You're going to be, the, you're going to be clay. And I'm going to be fire. Long as clay is around fire, it's, it's pliable. Do any pliable. Right? But once I move back, you get, get hard. See? God got close to Pharaoh. God moved back. God gets close to you. God moves back. See? What happens is we get hard when God moves back. But you can stay soft if you move close. Stay close to the fire. So, thank you. <laughs> I know some of y'all sleep, but y'all miss that. Yes. It wasn't that God, when it said God hardened Pharaoh's heart, it ain't, it ain't that God had to change him. He just took one step back. And what was in him manifested. But whenever God's around, it's like, anybody have children that play the parents? They play mommy against dad and daddy against mommy? I heard my daughter, she's a little girl. She was raising her voice, right? And I, I like, Jingled the bell. She's like, where is he? <laughs> See, my proximity. Come on, you, you won't play anything? <laughs> He'd be, he be loving the message. My proximity changes things. God is nigh them that have a broken heart. If you're crying all the time, I hope you're crying for the right reason. I hope you ain't crying because you ain't getting something. Cry. I, remember Mike? Remember, I love Mike. I remember Mike, Mike you know, he, he missed God. And he came to church, you know, and he was crying. 
And everybody was like trying to comfort him. Get off me. He said, I didn't say I miss God. Not missed God. I miss him. You know, he was away at school and, and he came back and he got it. And all he could do was snot. And everybody think, oh, Mike must be going through something. And he's like, get off me. I miss my God. See, God is nigh them that have a broken heart and save it such that be of a contrite spirit. If you're crying because you ain't got a car, you ain't going to have a car for a while. Because you're crying over a car? Where the world is going to hell and you ain't crying over them? No sense crying over spilt milk. Remember when your kid dropped the milk and they start crying? We lose stuff and we start crying. That's not going to bring God's presence. I'm putting my, my notes away. So here, close with me, 2 Corinthians 1.20. Listen, my 30-minute message, message turned into an hour and a half. Please, you'll love God. 2 Corinthians 1.20, you ready? I'll make no excuses. I think my messages are long, but they all make sense. Except for some time when my jokes go around the corner. Anybody there? 2 Corinthians, right? 1 verse what? What does it say? For all the promises of God. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him amen. To the glory of God through us. Amen. Now watch this. It says, now all the promises of God in him are yea and amen to the glory of God by us. It never said what that song says. See, y'all be listening to these songs and Y'all halfway know the Bible. All the promises of God are yea and amen. All the promises of God are yea and amen. It didn't say that. It says all the promises of God in him are yea and amen to the glory of God by us. We say amen. God says yes, it's yours. We say amen to his glory. I'm going to close here until you get it. All the promises of God are yes. Your job is to say amen to the glory of God. I received that to the glory of God. His promise was yes. And I said amen. And it's going to manifest to his glory. Come on, help me. All your children should be taught of the Lord. That's a promise. God says yes. I say amen. amen. To the glory of God. You should be the head and not the tail. God says yes. I say amen. To the glory of God. I should be above and not beneath. I should be the lender and not the borrower. I say amen. 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 Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet and begin to clap unto God. Try it. Clap unto God. These long messages mess up your back. But it's good for your soul. See, the splendor, the renown, the reputation of God hinges on God answering your prayer. And if you are created for his glory, then that means him answering your prayer is for his glory. Last analogy because y'all don't look like you got it. You got to change your tune over there. They, they got happy and you, you didn't go happy with them. Yeah. <laughs> now watch this. My last analogy, I get a haircut. And along with my haircut, I get a shape up. Mm. It ain't enough to get a haircut. You must be now Shaped up. <laughs> but if the hair is neat and you're out of shape, see, we're going to get our shape up today. 
See, we're going to praise God for all the amens. He doesn't have a problem with the promise. All the promises of God in him are yea. He says yea. And we, see, we have a problem with the amen. Well, you know what? Mm, ah, mm. I called you to be a pastor. Mm, but you don't like people. Ah, we're going to have problems. But if you say amen, he's going to work you. <laughs> he's going to work you. He's going to put you around people to the point where you're going to be buying people you hate. Sandwiches. Because you said amen. See, the moment you say amen, God says, I will get the glory. You get the goods. Amen. Amen. But the key is this, and this is how I want to say it. I want to close. Your whole life has been promised. Everything that you need has already been promised to you. It's not you have to work for it. You have to amen it. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Say it. Amen. 